How do you everybody? Welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Hopefully you guys are keeping good. Today we're going to be talking about the key move for effortless power. And it's a subject area that gets talked about a lot on YouTube in terms of, you know, swing slower, hit it hard, hit it further and all these sort of things. And there's an element of truth with that. But what I try and focus on on the channel is really the sort of key movements that give you the ability to actually do these things. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Now today what I'm going to be demonstrating just some very short swings um, and sort of still showcasing decent sort of distances. So we'll get some data coming up on the flight scope as well of some of these sort of short swinging actions. Now the reason for this is because I think whatever works for a golfer in terms of swing thought is always going to be different. It's going to be so individualistic for each golfer. So one of your mates might say, oh, I play really great if I sort of get this feeling of slapping it with my right hand. And that's fine. But what we can't always really suggest is that if that golfer is actually really doing that move, that might just be a feeling. And I think one of the areas of the golf swing in terms of feelings is how to start the downswing. So some golfers kind of suggest that they like the feeling of sort of pulling the club down and getting a feeling of casting the club. And some golfers maybe prefer the feeling of trying to hold on to lag a little bit more. Now, you can get the feeling of casting the golf club. And some people like that and they like the idea of matching that with their rotation. I'm genuinely standing here in front of you saying, I'm not saying that's incorrect. But what I want to do is talk about what kind of happens in the golf swing. Now, the power, the, the, the largest proportion of the power in the golf swing comes from the hands and arms. Okay, so, it, you know, things like your rotational motion and gaining momentum and using the ground and all these sort of things, they add additional force. But the largest pro proportion of your force is going to be coming from what your hands and arms are doing. And this is, you know, where the concept of lag comes in. So, what happens in the backswing position is that at some stage, there is a relationship created between the shaft of the club and the lead arm. Now, if you took that away entirely, then that's my point. You know, you would never be able to generate anywhere near as much distance, okay? It, you would lose it. And it's kind of like that sort of cracking the whip analogy. It's kind of this way, and then it whips its way through. So, what will happen in your sort of backswing at some stage, and, and, and for this video, I'm gonna do it very, very early, is you would kind of create this angle. Now, we sort of know from more recent discussions that the uncocking of the club, if you like, so biomechanically this sort of ulnar deviation, which is this motion or this sort of term uncocking, happens very naturally in the golf swing. So it's not something that you consciously have to do, it will happen. And when it sort of happens is when your hands or your arm starts to move past horizontal. And the reason for this is because at the moment, the golf club is at say a 90 degree angle to my lead arm. So the, if I was to let go of the club, it would fall straight down. If my hands travel past that point slightly and I was to let go of the club, it would start to want to go in a straight line in that direction. Okay, so the club is naturally going to uncock. What you've got to do is you've got to try and make sure that when it's uncocking, that you're directing it to the back of the golf ball. And therefore the question would be, what does that? And I think the answer would lie, in the lead shoulder. So if I kind of did a few swings lead arm only, we're kind of saying we'd cock the club up, okay, like so, and then if we want to get this feeling of effortless power, what we need to do is we need to kind of move and rotate our body so it kind of moves the shoulder, my lead shoulder back and behind my head, and as this happens, it will naturally have that effect of uncocking the club on the back of the ball. And that's a really, really key thing. So that's why then I can demonstrate some short swings because I'm getting up and through the ball, see my extension? My lead shoulder propels back and behind my body. That still gives me the ability to create effortless power. Now, if I took that away, and let's say I did a short swing and I stayed down on the golf ball, then I'm not suggesting that I won't be able to create any distance, but it's certainly gonna be significantly less. And you can imagine this in like a, a lead hand frisbee throw. The more that you rotate and you retract that shoulder blade back and behind you, the faster you can propel your hands and the faster you can, or the further you can throw the frisbee. The less that you do that, I'm not saying it won't go anywhere, but it won't go as far. So as I kind of demonstrate a few more of these, it's a case of cocking it back and then getting up and through the golf ball. So if you're somebody who wants that feeling of effortless speed, 
the big thing that you need to be concentrating on is more of that feeling of rotating your chest and extending up through the ball. And that's where then you can start talking about using the ground. Because obviously if my intention is to get up through the ball, and if my intention is to retract that shoulder back and behind me, then of course I'll be using the ground to do that. But that's the key thing, and that's what I wanted to really share with you, because we did a video on the channel the other day where I talked very much about this sort of idea of a, a short swing. And what I'm trying to say now is, well, if we look at it slowly, as I sort of turn, and then my shoulder goes back up and behind me, that's gonna have that uncocking nature on the club, gonna get us into this position, and then, like so, and the faster that we can retract out of the way, still makes it look effortless, but it's gonna generate a tremendous amount of speed. So you really wanna sort of practice that, putting your hands across your shoulder and really rotating and getting more up and through the ball, like so, because that's gonna get that shoulder back and that's gonna generate you that effortless power. So hopefully that video has helped. I'll catch up with you guys again really, really soon.